Hi everybody, Jonathan Angela Scott here, the Big Cat People, talking to you from our home here in Nairobi. Now this is one of our YouTube behind the scenes, the world as we see it, life, conservation, just things that have been sort of ticking along over this last week, this last month, that we wanted to chat to you with. And on today's chat, we want to raise one particular issue because it's been very prominent on Facebook around an incident that happened in the Maasai Mara and we're dying to get back and go on safari there ourselves very soon. There are visitors now coming into the country, great for them to be able to see the wonders of the Mara. But the incident that I want to talk about today was involving a young male leopard and a vehicle with open sides, photographer, safari guide and a situation with a young leopard which was very habituated to vehicles. Its mum had grown up around vehicles and who approached the vehicle and then started sort of messing around with the vehicle and potentially a very dangerous situation. I can remember a time when I was working on a book called The Leopard's Tale in the 1970s, 1980s, where a shy leopard got into an instance with a car and jumped in through the side of the vehicle, through an open-sided vehicle, mauled a lady, uh, tried to pull her out of the vehicle. The driver saved the day by putting his berry over the cat's face. But the fact was, it was the problem with the vehicle being too close, harassing an animal, which really didn't want to be, have anybody anywhere near it. Anyway, in this instance, nothing untoward happened, but it potentially was very dangerous. Would the mother get alarmed because of what the cub was doing? Would the cub get frightened? Would it even get into the vehicle? Who knows? But the fact was, it then raised issues which got some resonance comparing what was happening there and saying, well, you know, if Big Cat Diary could film Kike on the vehicle of Jonathan Scott's car, um, why should there be one rule for television people and one rule for everyone else? Well, of course, that isn't the case. That particular cheetah came from a legacy. In fact, possibly her mother. So this was Kike 2003, 17 years ago, mind you. And that particular Cheetah I'm referring to, who was the one that became famous in the Mara for climbing onto vehicles long before Kike appeared, although she could have been her daughter. And her name, according to the drivers, was Queen, a royal cat that would just so relaxed, would jump onto vehicles, which cheetahs do at times do, anyway where they occur, where they get used to vehicles. But the difference was that particular cheetah was one of a family orphaned in an instant where the mother was killed by predators in 1987 and where those cubs were then raised by the help of rangers who fed her and she got used to vehicles, she got used to people in a way that other cheetahs perhaps wouldn't and she would sometimes jump onto the car, she'd sit on the bonnet more than anything, it appeared, not because she wanted to interact with people, but because she wanted to get a good view around, like she would if she was jumping onto a termite mound, and of course sometimes marking the termite mound or the bonnet of the car by peeing and pooping on it. Well, in 2003, we had a cheetah called Kike, who was also habituated to vehicles, and in those days, when a, car, a cheetah would approach a car and jump onto the vehicle, it was an extraordinary experience. We certainly never tried to touch the cheetah, never tried to interact with her. And she basically was up there doing her own thing. And of course, from a filming point of view, it was a pretty unique viewpoint. And so we did it, but sadly, afterwards, people began to actually take it a step further. They'd get fed up with the cat and her cubs at times on the vehicle, maybe on a canvas roof, sunny day, just relaxing, and they'd start the car. And the chances were then possibly a cheetah would get injured. And we also had instances where with cubs that had got used to vehicles, they even at times tried to get into the car. There was one famous uh, image on Facebook, literally of a cheetah sort of almost sitting on the lap of a, a visitor. Now, fortunately, and this was always something that we bore in mind. Having a cheetah on your car is very different from a close interaction like that with any of the other big cats because they're more timid, they're less aggressive, and as you know, they've been habituated by people over thousands of years. So a different kind of cat, but a leopard or a lion, forget it. 
And so afterwards, after that instance, 2015, a long time later, Femke Brookhaus, who was researching cheetahs in the Mara with the Mara uh, Cheetah Predator Program, um, she wrote to us and said, look, I'm going to do an article for Suara magazine, our local magazine, and discuss this whole thing about vehicles and cheetahs and the protocols, because there was another cheetah by that time, Malaika, who was also very vehicle friendly. And you got some really silly stuff. People sort of putting a cap onto the top of one of the cheetah cubs, her cub that had jumped up onto the, the vehicle. And, and it just got really out of hand. And we realized our responsibility from those other times that all, whether the goodwill in the world, whether we felt that we weren't doing any harm, suddenly you had a situation which was a management issue. And so we issued a statement we talked to the people in the powers to be who administer the reserve. In the Mara Triangle, they never would let people do that, we later learned. And basically, we asked everybody to follow protocols, which the management authorities said, which was basically, if a cheetah like Malaika approaches your vehicle, engine drive away, don't let her engage with you. And we 100% believe in that. And so for people, I think, sadly, to compare that what was happening with this leopard was somehow a legacy of what we had done, I think is a little disingenuous because one thing, we have never, ever, ever encouraged practices which we knowingly would put people at risk and would in some way perhaps harm the animal and in doing anything which would in some way impinge on the life of these animals that we so love to be with. And we've raised the issue in recent times as there have been more and more people coming and wanting to get great photographs of wild animals. And is there anywhere better than the Maasai Mara in Kenya? We've encouraged people to be extra careful about keeping their distance or if an animal is looking stressed to move away. And if an animal comes to try and lie in your shade, in general, if you can, move away before they can do it. And occasionally you get caught out. But for anybody to think that our best intentions aren't good guiding practice, to encourage people to respect the animals, to see this not as entertainment, but to see it as an opportunity to celebrate the lives of these animals, well, we find that a little bit sad. And secondly, when it comes to film crews, yes, of course, we've got a responsibility. And if people say, well, why should the BBC or whoever, Nat Geo, Disney, be allowed certain privileges? Well, I can tell you one thing. We were never given the privilege to allow Kike to jump on our car or for Queen to do it. In those days, there wasn't a proviso against it. And as soon as it became an issue and we realized and the authorities did, we've got to stop this. We were 100% supportive of that. And why do film crews get privileges like the BBC? Because, of course, they are able to spread the word about these extraordinary creatures, about how important tourism is to the revenue of these areas, as we've seen only too well in COVID, uh, the COVID pandemic. And so, yes, of course they get privileges and we try wherever possible not to take advantage of those. So please, we want to follow the rules. We don't want to encourage bad guiding practices. We initiated one of the first driver's training programs in the Mara in the 1980s. And so for as much as it was an extraordinary experience to work on Big Cat Diary over those 12 years and to be able to have intimate experiences with animals, we certainly don't want to encourage anything that is going to actually make life more difficult for them than it is at times. So when they've got cubs, please respect it. These animals potentially, particularly leopards and lions, certainly would be more than a handful for anybody and we don't want incidents like that to happen. We're not pointing fingers, we're not saying blaming people, we're just saying, please, let's work together and that's the most important thing. Let's not criticize and be divisive. Let's just look at issues. Let's try and make them better. But let's not try and score points off of each other. If we can do that, it'll be a better future for all of us. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.